Hi, I'm Atish Tasir. I'm an Indian writer, uh, well, an Indian writer with a Pakistani father, and I'm uh, sitting and chatting to Kamala, who's come, well, who's Pakistani, and where we've just been exchanging love letters between India and Pakistan. <laughs> yeah. Not always love letters, but uh, letters at least. Yeah. Yeah. And so you were saying that you've actually spent a lot of time here. You know, the first time I came to Delhi, which was uh, 2004, I came here before ever having been to Lahore which is shocking. I was 30 years old and I hadn't oh, been to really? Lahore. Um, and my Lahori friends were just appalled. They said, you can't go to India before coming to Lahore. And it's true that somehow, you know, I just grew up not going there. Now I've been to Lahore several times. Yeah. But I think I probably, it's probably still true that I've, you know, in some total of days, spent more time in Delhi than Lahore. Does it feel unsafe? Because Bombay, if we carry on with that mm. comparison, Bombay feels quite safe in some ways. Bombay does feel safe. When I was in Bombay, I felt completely safe. Yeah. Uh, no, no, Karachi feels unsafe. It Karachi, feels unsafe. Yeah, and Karachi has always felt unsafe. But you know, these things Would are you so go for like a walk along the sea face or that kind yeah. of thing? I'd go for a lot walk along the sea face I and mean, I'd drive alone there mm. um, and all of that. But there's, it's just this thing on the, you know, periphery. Yeah. of your vision that you're sort of aware of. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it is one of the big differences between India and Pakistan. There were two things I noticed the first time I went to India, and I think Bombay was the first place I flew into. Um, one was statues, <laughs> right? Because in Pakistan, you don't really have figurative oh, yeah, right of stuff. Course. You don't have figurative art, so you don't have statues of the great men yeah, of yeah. history. Um, and the other was, I looked around and thought, oh, no guns. Because it just, I mean, Karachi. Oh, you saw guns all the time in Karachi. Karachi yeah. all the time. This idea of this Kalashnikov culture of the 80s. Yeah. Um, so I don't know whether, actually I'm interested in whether, whether Delhi and Bomb, well, let's talk about Delhi. Whether you feel levels of safety have changed here over the years. Well, I have to feel them on behalf of, of girls, yeah. you yeah. know, like That's it's not something I feel, mm. but I have to now, there's enough evidence and, and enough pe people telling you yeah. all the time how unsafe they feel, especially if they mm. come from out of town, that you can't ignore it, that, yeah. it, that it, it does exist. Mm. But do you oh. think of Lahore and Delhi as sister cities? Well, I'll tell you the difference mm. is that Delhi, the Delhi I grew up in, was exclusively a Punjabi city. Right. It was very much like, and hmm. the, the, in the last 15 or 20 years, Delhi has become a big cosmopolitan city for India. Hmm. It's full of communities from elsewhere, yeah. and especially in the working classes, hmm. it's one of the, those rare cities that almost doesn't belong to anyone. Hmm. Whereas Lahore is a, still yeah. a strong, like it's a regional yeah. city in some ways. Yeah. So that, um, I mean, in some ways, that cosmopolitanism in Delhi is yeah. new. I mean, it's funny to hear because, of course, in if you're from Karachi, then Karachi is full of Delhi wala's who are, you know, not Punjabi, oh, yeah, exactly. but who are who sort of so. So that side. Of I mean, my father's family is from Delhi. Yeah. So that side yeah. of Delhi is completely. Yeah. I mean, the old Delhi that really was closer to Lucknow mm. than it was to yeah. Lahore doesn't really exist mm. except in the way of in the old city or Maybe something. Maybe it exists more in Karachi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's yes. been moved completely. It's been moved, yeah. 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 Um, what's the, you say that, you know, mm. we were talking about this earlier, about a feeling, is there a kind of exhaustion in Pakistan at the moment? Af, do you feel this thing that I said that I felt mm. that people were dispirited? Yeah. Do you feel it too? As you probably know, Pakistan is a place where people get r are always talking politics. Yeah, like I mean, here. always have, and all my life have always been talking politics, consistently, incessantly in any situation. Um, and this time, when I was there, and there were peace talks with the Taliban happening. I suddenly realized that people were talking about it much less oh. than they usually do. And it wasn't that they weren't interesting, but there was this feeling of we don't even know what to say anymore. Right. And to bring people in Karachi to the point where they don't even know what to say anymore. I mean, that's... Yeah. And, and perhaps that's to stop believing in politics as a solution. To stop believing that, yeah. that, that whatever future is going to come to them will come through a political process. Is that, is that what it means? Like, is there a kind of despair with... I wonder because, you know, I don't know that there was much belief in a political process in the 80s and the ZIA years when people yeah, still talk about that, all the time, that right? That Benazir election yeah. Yeah. was full of hope. Like, I remember my mother covering it and it was Sure, but I mean, it should be said, I was, I was there in May last year yeah. when we had elections, when I was standing at the polling booths for about seven hours because there was a mess up. So we stood... And May last year, suddenly... And it, it is the thing about Pakistan as well that... You know, a few weeks before it felt like everyone was depressed and no hope and suddenly there we were all standing to vote and, and 
there was this carrying out the first legal transfer of power the first yeah. legal and there was this extraordinary optimism and hope which we all recognize as sort of false yeah but but it was there it it does i mean pakistan i think does surprise itself constantly um and i think that's partly why you know when people talk about relations with india and you know what do the people of pakistan want and you know maybe the mood is angry or the mood is anti india and i really do think that pakistan can surprise itself and everyone else in ways you don't expect that right. if there's the right moment and the right thing is said suddenly you'll find that actually people are optimistic about elections or people think peace is a fantastic idea yeah. um, but you need to give them the opportunity and this big it's battle that seems <laughs> like it's brewing that's yeah. going to be like, do you feel that people are behind it like there's the will to fight it or is there uh, i mean when you say people you know who who we talking outside, about outside outside the outside the drawing room classes yeah. outside it's difficult, all of you know, that when there was you say, there you was know. an article in one of the newspapers in dawn a few weeks ago by Cyril Olmeda who's a really oh yeah i like him very much really fine right. journalist yeah. it was called the most dangerous man in pakistan right right who do you think it was about <laughs> <laughs> ali zafar <laughs> <laughs> imran khan right and and cyril's point in there and i think there was a defamation suit brought by imran's party against the newspaper for this cyril's point was that previously anyone who spoke sort of favorably or generously about the taliban was recognized as belonging to one of the really right wing religious groups and people dismissed it as you know these guys are extremists they're the jui right. the jamaat whatever um and what imran did is to make that conversation mainstream right. and to package it in to a way to bring that bad politics to yeah. the center and to package it in terms of national interest and not crazy islam but just sort of you know um sort of a more genuine islam yeah. um and to talk in terms of uh you know anti-americanism and these people are just defending their rights and we need to you know acknowledge them. and and i think he had a very good point that that you know imran khan it has been really sort of shockingly dangerous in yeah. doing this in making this Scary. in making this soft on the taliban conversation really mainstream yeah with no, no with no harsh words ever to say to them no harsh words i mean will you know will even when he condemns an even when the taliban there's an attack on the province which he's governing and the taliban says we did it <laughs> imran will still say no no these are people trying to give the taliban a bad name and you think but they've said we did it <laughs> uh, so it's it's really extraordinary I yeah. mean, it's really a sort of bad news but i mean you've got elections coming up here do people feel hopeful do you think about that uh, yes Yeah. I think there is a feeling of hope. You know it's it's the it's a political system that mm. has thrown up options. Like yeah. you might not like Kejriwal but well. he's a new kind of guy. Yeah. And you might not like Modi mm -hmm. but he does represent an option both in ideology mm -hmm. and uh in the kind of direction that might that the country might go in. I don't particularly I have I'm full of reservations but I think that I like to see the political system responding. Mm. And I think that it has been. So people see, yeah, no, it's an ex an energized election, an exciting election, yeah. I think. Yeah. You think things will change but if for India Pakistan relations at all? Do you have a sense of that? I think that if both in mm. both places the happier times that there are mm. and i mean really as far as prosperity and economics goes yeah. it will immediately improve relationships mm. and i think that 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 could be in the offing yeah. um what are your daily what are you going to do as far as hanging out in delhi goes um well i'm i'm working awfully hard i've got a, a book launch on wednesday with new book oh, out oh wonderful so yeah you must so must read that. that book you must read that book it's called <laughs> a garden every stone see how we just get that in yeah. um But you know I'm also just here I'm going to see my friends I've got relatives here so half I'm, your family half right? my family you know half the family in 47 left and half stayed on um, so you know hang out I I really like being in Delhi it's you know full of things to see fantastic so, yeah, some shopping all right <laughs> <laughs> we'll listen have a great time thank you very much okay